Hello and welcome to North Star Stamper. I'm Sue Kramer. I apologize for the sound of my voice today. I've been resting it all day, hoping it wouldn't sound like this. Um, I do have warm water and I have cold water, so we'll see how I do. Uh, let's see, I am not finding myself on my computer. There I am. And I have it muted so that you don't hear me twice. Once is enough. Let's see. All right. Let me know when you're here. Say hello. Um, okay, so welcome. I'm Sue Kramer. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I live in Minnesota. We're expecting snow overnight. Um, not a lot. They said it will be measurable, but anyway, that's what happens when you live this far north. <clears throat> These are all the places you can find me. Um, I go by North Star Stamper. There's another Sue Kramer, and I had to come up with a new name. Um, so you can shop at northstarstamper.stampinup.net. I have my own website, northstarstamper.com. Um, I try to keep that updated. Um, look around. Let me know what else you'd like to see on there. I'm always open to suggestions. And you can contact me at northstarstamper at gmail.com. Hello, Kathy. Thank you for joining. And hello, Chris and Chuck, if you're there too. Christine, thank you for joining me. And Melissa, thank you all for joining me. All right, um, let me know if my voice drives you crazy. I will keep it short and we'll, um, I'll let you know we'll, what's going on after that. Okay, so um, I don't have all my October card class kits out yet. Some of you ordered while I was on vacation. I came home being sick, so um, it's been a long few days. I will get those out in the next couple days. Thank you for my visitors, my friends who stopped and visited at the craft show at our Redeemer Lutheran Church on Saturday. It was fun to see you. I appreciate that. I have new YouTube subscribers. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. I do take suggestions, and if you're not comfortable leaving a comment on YouTube, you can always email me at northstarstamper at gmail.com. A um, couple more notes. I'm looking into two more craft shows this fall, one on November 25th, which is Small Business Saturday that will be in Cottage Grove if I sign up, and then the other one is the one I did last year in Montemita, um, December 2nd at Our Lady of the Lake, I believe it is. So, um, what else? P um, my October Paper Pumpkin recipients, I have not mailed out your extra goodies yet. Um, I was on vacation when the kits came in. What else? I have two more things. Um, if you have your mini catalog, grab it. I'll show you what we're going to use today. <clears throat> I need a drink. Um, this is pages 36 and 37. If you have ordered a Christmas Everywhere card kit that's part of our um, exclusives, or you bought one from me on Saturday, Look inside to make sure there is a block. If there is not a block, contact Stampin' Up! or me, and we'll make sure you um, have one so you can make your kit. That kit is so cute. It's so fun. Um, and then starting with my November um, card class, Free With Purchase, I'm going to include written instructions. So once you see the cards tonight, if you don't want to listen to my scratchy voice, um, I will be including written instructions with these cards. So the paper we're using for our card kit, um, and I'm going to start with just November 1st through 12th. I thought a month was a long time to work with one card kit. So um, if you purchase just like last month, um, I'll show you when we get to the cards. So with a minimum order of uh, $35, I will be sending you card kits, and it'll be based on this designer series paper. It's called Winter Meadow. I was thinking I was making Christmas cards, but these don't really look like Christmas papers to me. It, it really is a winter meadow, not necessarily a Christmas meadow. So anyway, I'll show you the three papers we're using. Stampin' Up! did this one right, because if you cut this paper at 4 inches and 8 inches and then 12 inches, all six, one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of that will have a deer on it. They designed this so well. I was very, very pleased. And the back side is um, Pebble Path. So the, the deer are so adorable. 
The second card, we're going to use this piece, which I thought, thought looked a little more, um, oh, I need my catalog again, looked a little more Christmassy with the red and green or the mauve and the green. Um, and the, the card we're making with this one, let me get my catalog back out, is a version of this card here. Let me grab my poker. Um, these are one inch squares because this is a bigger pattern than this paper. I'm going to use one and a half inch squares when I make my version of this card. But just so you know the difference there and where I got my idea. And then the third piece of paper we're using is this one. And let's see, the back on this one, I think that's pretty peacock. And then this one does look like Christmas to me with the evergreens. And then smoky slate on the back side of that. So if um, you don't like or you want to make different cards than the ones I'm showing, you can always use the back sides. These are great neutrals. And you probably have a stamp set to coordinate with those. So that's what we're working with. My first card... And I have an idea. I haven't decided if I'm going to do this or not. Is this one with the deer. Um, super simple. Just a layer four by five and a quarter. Um, and then uh, I used basic gray for the uh, label. And those labels are the Tailor Made Tags dies. Sorry, it's a tag, not a label. And then I used Sweet Sorbet. I have to stop and think. I don't know where this red ribbon came from. Melissa, if you're still here, I know this is one of your favorite colors. I, it's not a current product. Maybe it was new last year when this was new. It may have been in last fall's catalog. I don't know, but I have enough of it, so I should be able to include a small piece for your tags. And then I tied it together with um, In Color Twine, again in the Sweet Sorbet. And then I have the dots. Uh, what are they called? in color pearls um, and I thought they coordinated really well together the card base is smoky slate super simple so let's let's make that real quick I already have my card base cut and scored uh, let me do it this way and so how's my voice is it driving you crazy oh Melissa says that the new one in the be mine suite oh you might be right because I just noticed it was not current I thought I kept those products separate, but so maybe this is new and coming out in January. Well, we'll find out. I will find out. Um, and then I have a piece. I'm going to send you two six inch pieces and then you're going to have to trim it. You a couple ideas. You could trim three inches and use the deer on one card and then the other side on a different card. That's a great color for a masculine card. I'm not going to do that today. I am going to cut this to five and a quarter. And then I have a scrap. I haven't figured out what to do with that yet. So my other idea was to not use the tags on this card. Your kit will include the tags. Again, a white one and a pebbled path one. I think my voice is okay if I try to speak up. Um, Andrew's not down here tonight, so I can be a little louder and um, just be forceful with my language or my speaking. So the Merry Christmas is from the Celebrate with Tags. You've seen this a lot because I also like the Happy Birthday. I thought about just stamping Merry Christmas on here. Let's do that and see if we like it. I think I will because this would make really quick cards if you don't have die cuts or don't have time. So I'm going to ink up really well. Sorry. Uh, something else I'm going to grab. I was told that not many of us show cleaning on... There we go. My uh, video is delayed. So I ink, ink. And this is pretty straight. So I'm looking at the bottom of the word Christmas. I'm going to hold that and let the ink transfer to the paper for just a second and hope I have a good... There we go. And then I use the smaller piece to make sure I have all the inside done. I'll push that out of the way for a minute. So there's my... Uh, let's see. Let's just put that on real quick. 
I think I might like it without the tags even better. You get a better view of... Make sure I'm doing it the right way. Boy, is this a quick card, huh? Merry Christmas. Add some bling. Yeah, let's just take these out because I'm using these on two of the cards. And take your pick tool. I like using the putty end. And these are sweet sorbet. Let's see where we want them. Odd numbers in a triangle. If you've heard me talk about that, let's put one up there. And then one maybe on the tree. Look at that. I think that's pretty cute. And then I do have a layer for the inside with smoky slate. It is pale enough that I think you could write on it. Um, but I think it's just a nicer finish if we put that on the inside. And then I grabbed, let's just do this. Um, in the Magical Meadow, which coordinates with this paper, I only have the stamps, I don't have the dies. I'm gonna use this one, it says, may this season of sparkle bring joy and delight. I haven't used this yet, so I'm gonna prep this. I'm going to do it again in Sweet Sorbet. I'm going to stamp off down here, sorry. Make sure it's a little crooked. I did sell some Christmas cards at that show on Saturday, and the lady wanted me to have stamped on the inside of my card, my Christmas cards. I had not had that request before. Um, I had request for stamping on the inside of my sympathy cards and so I do have a current stamp I think it was you, you may know or something like that is a nice has a nice sympathy uh, saying on the inside for cards all right put these together just like that I'm not going over my um, you see I going around my uh, stamped image because the red takes a long time to dry sometimes and I want people to know it's a Stampin' Up card. So I have my handcrafted from the heart Stampin' Up. Just like that. Clean that one off. Let me get a little better organized. All right. And then I sign it. Where's my pen? There we go. What do you think, with or without tags? Um, your kit will include the tags. You could do something else with the tags if you'd like this better. I don't know. <clears throat> Kathy says, my voice doesn't bother her, but I surely hope you can talk tomorrow. I, it's getting better every day, and I just keep drinking warm water. Oh, Kathy likes it better without the tags. I don't know. I think I do, too. You see more of the paper, but... It'll be your card. You can decide. Again, you'll get two card kits. Maybe do one with and one without, and then you'll have tags to use for something else. I do like stamping my um, envelope, but right now I can't think clearly. Um, and I will include um, scraps or small pieces of ribbon for your tags. All right, that's card number one. I'm going to keep these. I might need them. Card number two might take us a little longer. Hopefully, my voice will hold out. This is card number two. Again, it's based on that card on page 36 of the mini catalog. My squares are one and a quarter, one and a half inch. The ones in excuse me, in the catalog are one inch, but with it, like I said, with the bigger print, I wanted a bigger square because I didn't want one of my squares to not have any of the moody mauve. And I did stamp on here. You can see I have a little halo there and that's been bugging me. But I waited to show you my little trick for um, covering up halos on an envelope. I would just do that. And hopefully they wouldn't care. If it were on a card, if I get a halo on a card that I can't redo, I would put bling on top of it. That's my little trick for the moment. All right. 
I did use different uh, bling on this card. All right, card base is Pretty Peacock. I love this color. I am very happy they brought it back. Oh, I learned a trick. Um, I think this was on World Card Making Day. One of our designers, or she used to be a designer, I don't know what she is now, Caitlin, if, Melissa, if you know what Caitlin is, she puts her card at the bottom here to make sure it lines up just perfectly. And go like that. And then I'm going to bring out my bone folder. I am going to put it under here. Darker papers get a sheen to them when I use my bone folder on them. So I'm going to go like that. I notice it more on dark colors like this one and um, Blackberry Bliss. All right, so I'm going to give you a piece of four by six inch, um, four by six piece of pattern paper. And you could do this and do something different if you want. Your card, you can change it up. So I'm going to cut off, I think I did two inches. Let's measure. No, I didn't. I did one and a half. That's kind of my theme, right? Let's cut this side off. It has fewer berries. So one and a half. I will send you two pieces of four by five and a quarter white so that you can um, build this on here and then one for the inside. And then my squares were one and a quarter. So I am just going to cut. Let's clean up a little bit. All right. One and a half. I keep saying one and a quarter, don't I? One and a half. And then this was four. So I'm going to cut it three. And one and a half. And at first I was thinking, oh, this is a waste, isn't it? But hold on. It, I used it on the card on those less, um, those smaller sections. So again, three which is just double one and a half. That's the only reason I did that. So let's, uh, let's do, a minute. what do I have left here? I think I did that. Oh, it is one and a half. All right. So I'm going to cut all these. So that one and a half makes sense to start with. I don't know why I thought I did it at two. So I have a one and a half inch by four, just as an, um, because they did that on that card. And then these are one and a half inch squares. And then I do have some scraps. But they are going to fit perfectly. I think I'm done with this. All right. Let's get building. Where's my piece at? So I'm just going to put this on the edge. Like that. If I have not cut it properly or exactly the way it should be, you have a couple options. You know, if this green is smaller than the white, you could trim down the white so it does match. You see it better here. Uh, it's pretty good. But you can see that white right there. So I'm just going to take my green blending brush and add a little green. I did on that other card, my sample card, and you probably didn't even notice it, did you? So there's the beginning of our card. Now I'm going to get my trimmer back. So I am going to cut one of my squares. This should be one and a half by one and a half. It didn't look like a square on the diagonal. So I'm going to put two opposite points right in this track of my trimmer and cut. This is the way I did it on my sample card and it seemed to work for me. Something else might work too, I don't know. And then I put these right like this just as a starting point. I'm going to separate them a little more this time. I didn't do that last time. So one I'm going to put 
I'm putting the the longest side of the triangle flush against this. It this will be covered up with ribbon. And then I noticed that the corner hung off, so I'm not going to put any adhesive on that corner. I'm going to leave a gap. I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch gap between my squares. And then we're just going to build from there. This one touches, they don't square. I know they are. No, see that one isn't. I'll have to re. My grid paper will come in handy. That one is. I have to go measure that one. Hopefully I won't need it. I already put adhesive on it. Sorry. A little bit of green glue. And then an eighth of an inch from each one, lining up this line here, this here, and this here. That's pretty good. I'm just going to measure each one real quick before I put adhesive on. That works. Sorry, I think I was off camera. Let's get the corner a little better. This one is a little putsy. But I like the effect of it. Um, with my other card, I paid more attention to what was up and what was down. But see, those are not quite the right size, are they? I must have mismeasured. You will measure better because you will not be fighting a cold. All right? Hopefully. And measure, put that right there, eyeballing it. You could use a piece of cardstock that you have trimmed to an eighth of an inch or whatever. Um, oh, goodness. Now I have adhesive on my sweater. Oh, goodness. Goodness, goodness. That's one and then half. That's bigger than it needs to be. You know what? We're going to leave it. And we're going to put it here. This card won't be perfect. Yours will be better. And then this big one, I want to make sure I put that pink on so that's the corner. I'm going to, well, actually, we'll put glue here. There. You get the idea. And then these scraps that were kind of off are going to go right here. Fill in these holes. So you don't really need that many squares when you're working with one and a half inch. Yeah, they're not lining up, but that's all right. I'm going to fill in these. Oh, this card's going to be a mess. I just have glue everywhere now. You get the idea. <laughs> oh my goodness. And then I want to fill in this. So I'm going to take my scissors that I use for goopy stuff. These have adhesive already on them. There's a scrap that we can use to fill in this. I'm going a little fast. I would go more slowly, but I need to keep going while my voice is working. You get the idea right once these are dry you trim them right, my garbage up here my other idea that i thought about showing you tonight but it's not going to happen is take this piece and run it through an embossing folder just give yourself a little more texture on this card that would be kind of pretty uh, the painted texture comes to mind. Or any. All right, there's that. Then I will include a piece of the Moody Mauve, I think. Miss, uh, the Mauve one. I can't think right now, sorry. This will be included in your kit. And again, you'll get two of these as well for a $35 order. From November 1st through November 12th. 
I put a glue dot on there. Sorry, I think I did it off camera. So I will come back on camera and show you. I pick up a glue dot, push it together, and then I lift it off with my thumbnail, and it is now sticking to my ribbon. And then I just pull that straight, pull that down. Are we ready? We are ready. Need some large dimensionals. I'm going to put one in the middle. The ribbon is already a little bulky, so I'm going to leave it off of there. If you want to be more secure, make sure things don't come up. Use another glue dot on this side of your ribbon. There we go. And put that on our... Oh, goodness. Card base. Oh, I really like it. I do have glue everywhere, and I'm going to want to put some there. But there's that. This was my original card. Okay. So I'm going to include... And this is the one I... Although it's Christmas colors... It just didn't look Christmassy to me. So I am using Go To Greetings with a Thinking of You. I thought this would be a really nice card to send to somebody um, who has lost a loved one this year and let them know that you're thinking of them as, with their first holiday without without someone in their life. This one got ripped. I will send a couple extra of these. And this label is from the um, Something Fancy Dies. I'm guessing for that. Oh, there we go. Yes, that worked. That worked. I think. Yes, Something Fancy Dies. All right. One more thing to show you. So the berries are from the... Magical Meadow. Um, I kind of wish it were a two-step that the berries, two-step stamp that the berries were different from the leaves. I don't have a, yeah, Moody Mauve. I said that right. I don't have a Moody Mauve marker. I just didn't buy them for whatever reason. So I will show you how I did this. So using the corner, let's move these out of the way so they don't get all inky. Using the corner of my ink pad, I just inked up the berries. You can use another corner and ink up the other berry. Then I'm going to take my blender pen and lift where I didn't mean to put ink. Then I'm, and, you, and this is a distinctive stamp. So I like to use my um, blending brush, and I can add some more there, to my berries. And then I have Pretty Peacock and Shaded Spruce pens, markers, I mean. And did you know we've they updated? So this is an old pen. This is um, Shaded Spruce, and it's a fine, really fine tip. The new pet markers have more of a bull, bull, what am I going to say? Bullet tip. So that was kind of interesting. And then on the back side, they both are brushed. So this is the old one, and this is the new one. They're both brush tips. And I think I will, let's see, make sure I've got this right. I'm going to use some of each. Because I think the paper has some of each on there. So I'm going to just color my leaves with a little of both inks. And then I'm going to use my small blending brush. Just tap, tap, tap. And then I put it on scrap paper. Actually, let's do this one. I did um, do it on scrap paper and I fussy cut them out. But I want to put these on my envelope. It's a 
open the floor. Let's make sure. Yep. I have done it to re-engage the ink. And that is how you can get multiple colors, even if you don't have the markers. Do you see that? I think it's really pretty. So you're using a combination of markers and pens, or uh, markers and your ink pad. Um, it just so happened with those berries kind of on the edge, I could use the corner of my pad. So I did that same thing several times, and then I fussy cut them because I don't have the dies. And let's put our card together. I think we're good. All right, clean up a little bit. Where'd my card go? And normally I like to put three, but three got to be too many. Let's just use one, because that's what I have right now. I may have another one somewhere in here. I do want to get to my third card yet. So I'm going to tuck this under just like that. Then I'm going to use some small dimensionals. Oh, I got ink on this. Uh, let's see. Let's try again. If I can find my stamp. And my ink. Take two. Hopefully this one will work as well. I did practice before I did this stamp and I knew and I learned oh, that's where I went. And I learned that my um my sticker on the front does match my um stamp on the back. So I knew it would um I didn't have to practice this time is what I'm trying to say. Because I practiced before I made my sample card. All right. Mini dimensionals. I want one right there. And then on the other end of my um, sentiment. I don't know. Do, does this look like a Christmas card to you? I, I wasn't sure. Let me know in the comments. There's that. Did I do it right side up? Oh, thank goodness. Um, you can see I stamped one on the inside, too. And I will do that with this card, but not right now, because we have another card to make, and that's crooked, isn't it? Sorry. I will add a piece up there, too. I was going to add a little wink of Stella. To these berries. I could do it to all the berries. And I thought that goes well with the um, the stamp I used in the inside of the first card. May this season of sparkle bring joy and delight. And then you have a little sparkle on your berries. What am I missing? I am missing some gems. These are and these will be included in your kit. Uh, Tinsel Gems 3-Pack. The colors here are Misty Moonlight, Fresh Freesia, and Lost Lagoon. I don't know which is... What were they? Misty Moonlight, Lost Lagoon. I don't know. I thought they coordinated well enough with these, with this. But that's what I... Oh, I didn't even realize. There's two different sizes there. There's small and big. Anyway, three in a triangle. There we go. Card number two. Did I get it right? Close enough. You can see my first one. I was more careful with where my berries were. I kind of rushed through this one, but you get the idea, right? All right, that's card number two. So those two cards, two each of those two cards for a $35 order. Sorry, I sound like a commercial. Um, and if your order, November 1st through 12th, is $50 or more, 
I will include this card. These two of these cards. Let me clean up just a little bit more. Okay. I need room for my box. And I have a fancy fold or a fun fold like this with that um, tree paper. I thought it was really pretty. I am going to cut this for you. This was um, this a similar card was my Christmas card in August 2022. So if you want to go to my website, you can see how um, some other ideas with last year's um pattern paper. Okay, to make two cards, you need one eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. So we are going to score it on half both directions. So score it four and a quarter this way. Nice, good crease or fold or score line and five and a half this way. And then we're going to cut it at an angle. And I wanted, I, I, I thought through it first. I wanted this corner to come down, so I knew I wanted it this way. And I, I don't know if it matters. So this is longer than 12 inches, so you have to be kind of careful. So I have the corner right in the groove here, and I'm going to line it up with the cutting track. And then you just have to kind of guess at the bottom, because it is longer then actually I'm going to flip it over and do the other side I have a bigger trimmer um, that isn't stamping up but it still wasn't big enough I'm just opening it a little hopefully that worked it did hooray and then you have two cards so it's a little tricky getting it to fit, but just put your corner of your cardstock right in the cutting track. Um, for, I was able to do it all in one the other, with, my, with my card earlier today, but you get the idea. All right. Let me think for a minute. if it matters which way you cut it which corner to corner because you can just turn it around so there is our card so this one comes down and this one goes like that it isn't perfect I will be more careful on your card kits all right and then we have I did have one cut just in case I didn't get there today Your card, um, your DSP is four by five and a quarter, and we're just going to cut that from corner to corner. I'm going to make sure I'm cutting it the right corners. So I need to cut it right here. I'm going to put it in my trimmer, point, and this point, and this point in the um, track where I knew it was going to cut. I hope that makes sense. All right, DSP. The color here is Misty Moonlight. Oh, I didn't show you the card. Did I? I did show you the card. I added a Knight of Navy layer with the, um, sorry, I have to, I can't adhere and talk at the same time, can I? That's so funny. It wasn't quite perfect. Um, Knight of Navy, using the something fancy dies. I, th I think I'm done for the day. <laughs> Thank you for putting up with me. Oh my goodness. I have been, sl I slept 11 hours the other night. I think it was Saturday night after my um, craft show on Saturday afternoon. It just wipes me out. Lining it up, you get a nice even border, about a sixteenth of an inch. You don't get much room to play. All right. And there's our card. You could add another. I've seen this with more layers. Like, 
I want to say another one here. I don't know. I should just stop. I should stop. Okay. So we need our label and some ribbon. I do happen to have two rolls of this ribbon. It has been on back order because it is such a lovely ribbon. It's sheer. So I tried, this is the one I tried to color, but it's nylon. So it didn't, um, accept the color very well, but it's, it's just so lovely. I love the silver trim on it. So this is Night of Navy. I thought it went really well with the Misty Moonlight. Just, and then I have this stamp from the stamp set that coordinates Misty Moonlight Ink. And just my blue um, blending brush. I just get such nice images. I'm going to practice a little. Hopefully you can see. Oops. Nope, not enough ink. And this I do practice a few times. Better. Ink, 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 ink. I think by doing this, I'm just getting more ink in all those little, I think they're dots, to make these distinctive stamps. That's good. So I'm going to stamp on the bottom of that. Where did my card layer go? And I have a layer for the inside, so I'm going to stamp on the bottom of that. This is all inked up, so I didn't clean it. I kind of had to condition it with all this ink. That. One more. Don't clean it yet. Just leave it. And if there is a lot um, of ink around the edge, just make sure not to tilt it. I'll show you when I stamp. So more ink, ink, ink. I know it looks messy, but... So when I stamp, I'm going to go down, hold it with pressure, and lift straight up. So I don't want to tilt it so the ink around the edges um, doesn't make that halo. Make sure I'm in the right corner. Sorry for the mess. I'll clean it up and then down, press, and lift. Just like that, I have all these coordinating. I think that's why I like stamping so much. Because I can coordinate my envelope, my inside layer, and my layer on the front. In any color I want. If I didn't like this, maybe I wanted this green instead of blue. I could easily stamp my background paper because I have a stamp to do it. I don't always have pattern paper in the colors I want. Maybe that's what I'll do tomorrow. We are, like I said, we're expecting snow and I think I'm going to stay home and stamp tomorrow. Maybe I will try to make this card with that stamp in green instead of blue. We don't have pattern paper, so I'm going to have to make my own. I have Night of Navy ink and my Winter Wishes sentiment from that um, Magic Meadow um, stamp set. Again, I practiced before I did this, and I know that my, my, my sticker and my, my stamp do coordinate, or do they? Let's practice. I thought they did. So I'm lining up wishes with the bottom here, and that's pretty close. So I'm going to make sure wishes, because that winter is so, so script, I can't tell where it's where the bottom is. But the wishes is nice and straight, and I do want to stand straight. I stood up so I could see what I'm doing. Pretty good. I think I did it on the back of it, but that's all right. All right, let's put this all together. Again, we're going to use the in color um, pearls, the 22 to 24 in color pearls. I thought the um, Orchid Oasis looked close enough. Close enough for me. All right, let's start with the inside. Again, so these are my bonus cards. For a qualifying order. I will get all that on my blog tomorrow as well. So if you forget what I said or don't want to have to find it in the video, it'll be on my blog tomorrow. So there's my inside. 
my envelope. Okay, a couple things here. <laughs> Looking for my um, tear and tape. I'm going to put my navy blue label right in the middle, but I'm only going to adhere it to this side. You don't want to adhere your card closed. What I like to do is put a small piece of tear and tape near the middle and then put a small piece of tear and tape on the end of this label. See, I can't talk or deal with adhesives. And then put this right there. Remember, my, my adhesive was here on the label and here on the card. Ta-da! Ta-da! Okay, almost done. Sorry if we're going late. Yeah, a little bit late. But I made three cards with lots of ideas for you. I kind of like the single, but um, I noticed... The single up and down but I noticed this was enough ribbon to go up and down three times instead of twice one two three I'm gonna put another piece on here just hold it I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of this. My ribbon's nice and flat, so it'll it'll still be a pretty um, flat card. And I think I'll put four on here, just like that. And there's card number three. Oh, bling. Hold on. I'm not done yet. We need bling. It's not closing, is it? Where did my bling go? There it is. When it doesn't want to close, I turn it over. Should have done this better before I add, added the designer series paper. There we go. That's good. And I take your pick tool. That was kind of a lot of white space. Let's put one there. Let's put one there. And let's put one there. Three in a triangle. I don't know where I learned that. Somewhere. And there's our third card. Let me pull them all out. Here's card number two. Thank you for joining me today. I'll have to go back and read comments. Um, where did my first one go? I put it on. The... I'll just include. Let's see here. I guess I could use that same stamp on my envelope here in gray. We'll see. All right, let me um, watch my video for just a minute while it gets caught up with me. Thank you for joining me. Happy stamping. All right, thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Anne. Um, I am feeling better every day, and you can even hear my voice is almost back to normal right now. Uh, Kathy likes my last card. This fun folds. I just... I. Not that I don't like making standard cards. Oh, I didn't do the inside of that card. Looks like I forgot to take. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway, <laughs> you know what I mean to do. You, hopefully most of you have been with me long enough. Oh, thank you for putting up with all this. Let's see. Um, Kathy, I know you could do that cut. Um, again, um, my... Um, Maybe I, in my next newsletter, I think I will show you how to find the details of this cut, this card on my blog. 
I don't know if many of you know how to do that. Um, Anne, <clears throat> Anne says, not a Christmas card, but I guess you could. I kind of agree. Let's see. need to um drink more water kathy says she missed the card in the catalog i was looking at the catalog at the craft show on saturday and so i asked um diane my friend i said what do you think of this card because i i was not feeling well on saturday i'm like how about this one for for monday okay anyway i think we're good thank you for joining me um and thank you for all your support. I appreciate all of you. You're awesome. Um, that's all I have for today. Thank you for joining me. Happy stamping.